Hey guys, what's happening? Chris here. I see a lot of times that when people are deciding what career to pursue, one of those deciding factors ends up being the potential amount of money they can make with that career. Unfortunately, a lot of people end up sacrificing their game design careers because they think that game designers don't make a lot of money. That is why in today's video, I'm going to explain in full detail what the compensation is like for a game designer and hopefully you can get a better idea if it's the right career for you. The average game designer salary as per Glassdoor, $58,627. The lowest end is around 39k and the highest is 86k. Obviously, a lot of factors come into play to determine this range, starting with the fact that it's self-reported by employees from the company. Additionally, we're also going to look at some other information that isn't always taken into consideration when coming up with these numbers. The first factor that you have to consider for a salary in game design is obviously location. As I have mentioned before, most game studios are located in either California, Seattle or Austin. That doesn't mean that there aren't studios in other places, but there are a lot of more options in the places I've mentioned. The location is important because the higher the cost of living, the higher your salary will be. To put this into perspective and again using Glassdoor as our source, the median salary of a game designer in Los Angeles is $65,207, which is higher than the national average that I previously mentioned. Now, if we look at the salary of a game designer in Madison, Wisconsin, we can see that the average salary is $53,944, and that is a little below the average of the national salary. However, the average cost of living in these two cities is vastly different when you take into consideration the cost of housing, gas prices, or even the cost of utilities, to name a few. Bear in mind that the fact that studio is located in a cheaper area doesn't always mean they can afford to pay you a decent salary. This becomes especially true when the candidate is experienced, which leads me to my next point. The second factor is experience. Like in many other professions, experience is a huge deal. The more experience you have, the higher your salary can be. Salaries for game designers just entering the industry start at around 35k, while salaries for senior game designers start at around 50k. This is very important because you need to know your value as a game designer and you need to make sure to keep growing your salary as you get more experience. The third factor is the type of studio for which you are working. Depending on the size of the studio and the available resources they have to their disposal, your salary may vary. For example, don't expect a big salary if you're working in the indie scene. But if you're working in the AAA industry, you may get a more general salary. Something important to consider about this is that each industry has advantages and disadvantages, as any other industry. While in the indie game industry you might earn a lot less, you might end up getting more down the line when the game ships. This is because there are fewer people working at the studio, and if the game sells well, you can get a big bonus, which can be quite sizable if you work on a very successful game. Another advantage of indie studios is that they sometimes offer stock options, which help a lot, especially if the studio ends up becoming successful in the long run. The disadvantages of working in an indie studio are, of course, that the pay can be low sometimes because of the amount of resources available. Not to mention that you might need to be a true team player and wear multiple hats for a very small price tag. If you work in the AAA industry, the advantages are that you get a higher salary because of the resources of that particular studio. The drawback is that you don't get stock options or potential income depending on the game sales. One of the best things that I don't think is known from people who want to become game designers is that there are milestone bonuses and company bonuses. These obviously vary and can be non-existent depending on the company you work for. But essentially, a milestone bonus is a specific amount of money you get every time the team delivers a specific milestone depending on their production cycle. Examples of this can be an alpha build of the game, a beta build of the game, or the gold master build of the game. These milestone bonuses are given based on a small percentage of your annual salary. So for example, a beta bonus can be 5% of your annual salary, depending on the company. Then, there are also company bonuses, which are bonuses that are given based on performance and normally after shipping a game. These are way more substantial than milestone bonuses and can vary depending on the game's production cycle length. For example, per Glassdoor, we can see here that Treyarch game design employees have 78,000 of average pay, but they also have milestone bonuses 
that average around 5,000. And then they have profit sharing bonuses, which are 71,436 in average. That amounts to an average of 22,301 in additional pay, which means your annual salary might be more than what you originally thought. The type of employment you have also matters. For example, if you're a contract employee, it is likely you are paid hourly, which might be good if you get to charge for overtime. However, this means you might not have access to some perks or benefits full-time employers are given, such as health insurance, life insurance, assistance to pay student loans, etc. Even as a full-time employee, depending on the position and studio, some people are paid hourly and are eligible for overtime, which seems a bit more fair given the amount of extra work and crunching we do in our industry. So while the minimum salary might look like a small figure, make sure you look into the benefits and perks the company offers, as some of them are pretty awesome. Human resources tends to look at these benefits as part of your total salary, since most large studios offer some, if not all of the following. Commuting expense aid, health and wellness expense reimbursements, free food and beverages, team outings and dinners, company offsets or events, company swag, health insurance, life insurance, employee assistance program, etc. My recommendation for you is to make sure the offer you are considering accepting checks all of the aspects you consider important. For some people, having health insurance is super important, yet for others, especially if they are younger or right out of college, it might not be as big a consideration, since they might be able to be on their family's health plan. As you can see, there are a lot of factors that influence the salary of a game designer, and it is not always just the total annual salary you see advertised online. Although at first glance it might seem that game designers don't make a lot of money, some game designers make more than enough money to support their family and loved ones. However, something that I always say is to never enter a profession because of money. I really think that if you love to do something, money will come eventually. So my advice to you is that while being practical, always put your happiness and joy before money. To be perfectly honest, personally, I wouldn't want to be in a super high paying job that I hated and having to wake up every day hitting my life or feeling anxiety. And that's it you guys, thank you so much for watching, whatever things are blocking you from getting started in your game design career, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. See you next time!